Uh, let me have a bite first, cause this, look at this. I need you guys to feast your eyes on this. It's my first proper meal I've cooked in a while. Cause we had this lockdown, right? And I was Mr. Chef, Mwah. I was on for the first few weeks. Like four or five weeks, I was on. And then Uber Eats came back. Then I was off. Bro, also, free plug. But shout out to these guys, man. Boom, trough sauce. Infused, truffle infused hot sauce. Speaking of truffle butter, my guy, Derek Bumpson. Talk about the build-up. Oh yeah, yeah, I was about to say like so. Uh, how did the fight even come about? I can't remember exactly, but I remember going to um, LA for the press conference for this fight. There was a big press conference, right? To announce the next roll of fights coming up. And this mother decided that, I don't know, he was just gonna like come at me for no reason. So what do I do? I clap back. I think it started at the hotel lobby. What's up? What, for me? I'm about to get paid, bitch. 50 G's for the knockout win. Face down, ass up. And then it ended up at the press conference. And I remember he was walking right up to me. Didn't even hit the brakes because he knew Daniel was going to put his hand there and block him. And I thought about, because I put my hand on his chest and I thought about slapping him, but I didn't in that split second. He was saying all this shit to me, blah, blah, blah. And that's when I dropped my infamous line when I told him I would um, assault him and, you know, own him against his will and without his consent and just let him know like, i'll fuck you up you know like i would pwn you that's it so yeah you know what i said don't fucking play around with me and i would own him without his consent as a man some has a little bit more a little bit more spicy mm. yeah in the press conference she was trying to like you even see him thinking because i was just giving it back to him and you see in this bit he'll be talking he was like what else did I write? What else am I gonna say? What else did I have in the line? Anyway, even at the weigh-ins, the ones you guys didn't see, he literally makes the weight like with less than a minute to spare. I remember like he, he ran past me on the way to the scales to make the weight with just a minute to spare and he makes the weight, he gets all excited and I'm just like, bro, calm down, you're depleted right now. Look at you, you look like shit. He's like, so now, boy, so for you now, boy. Kept calling me boy as well. I was like, who the fuck is your boy? Boy? This fight had a lot of uh, spiciness to it. And I knew, like, when it was time to shine, I'd fuck him up. Yeah. Also, fucking New York, the time difference. Yeah, that 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 one got me. I was used to being in LA, I was used to going to Vegas, but then being on the East Coast, the, the jet lag definitely got me on this fight. I won't lie. Um, Cause I didn't sleep for the first like four or five days or something. It wasn't until like maybe a day before the win, I started to sleep properly. And you, 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 you're me as well. Oh, that's right. Yeah, I almost pulled out of this fight. Thanks for reminding me. I almost pulled out of this fight because I had some real problems with my knee. So I think my dad um kind of just kind of gave um Eugene some advice and just said like just take a week and a half off not doing anything. And that was really dangerous being so close to the fight. Like I think maybe six, five weeks out. Just take a week week and a half off. It's an old injury with my knee and nothing MCL or ACL wise, but it was really bad that I couldn't walk on it. Then we took a week and a half off or a week off. No, we took a week off. Just nothing, doing nothing on it not training at all. So I took a week off this camp. That was really dangerous and it paid off because I didn't have to pull out then. Then my, cause it was really like literally this close to pulling out. How many weeks out were you? Like five, five weeks out, I believe. Yeah, around five, six weeks out. But don't quote me on that. Check it out in the documentary. Yeah, and one bit I do I appreciate in this fight is this right here, my summoning jutsu. Cause I, I, I had my, my back tattoo half done. You see me hit the summoning jutsu. I was like, my man, back up, let me work. Let me work. The scroll, open it, blood seal, boom. And I result, oh my God, that was fucking gangster. I was so relaxed, so calm. I think the main event was Black Beast versus um, DC. And I felt like I stole the show. I felt like I was the talk of the show after all that. Man, I don't want to say about this guy, but you look in his eyes, bro. This guy was shook. He was feeling the heat of the moment. I can, I can see it in him. So I just knew like, you ain't about that life now. All that shit you've been talking, you're gonna pay for. Kept on calling me skinny as well. I was like, bro, this ain't CrossFit. This ain't bodybuilding. What the fuck are you like? Oh, you skinny. So then when I was in my stance, I hit my stance, man. And I swear, when I'm done with this game, when it's all said and done and I retire, this stance right here is gonna be iconic and synonymous with me. It's gonna be like the Jumpman logo or whatever. Look at him, shook, shook. You can feel it. And then here I am, boom. This is iconic for life. You know, I know everyone likes to look at the Rock Lee stance, but Nah, this right here, this is iconic. And guess what I said to him in this moment? I said, let's go, bitch. I'll show you who's skinny. 
start to, you know, work my game. Everyone knows how I like to work my game. I won't give away too much, because um, even if I give you the blueprint, still fuck you up. But I don't, I don't give away too much. I'm just showing you what I was feeling more, what I was feeling and what I was thinking during this. And yeah, he went for the leg straight away. Ah, see, you're the fucking cheat. Look straight away, because he's already shook. He knew. So I kicked him, and he knew he had to find a way to get close to me. And look what he did. And he tried to say, look at my shorts, bro. Intentionally grabbed my shorts straight away. I didn't say anything there. I was like, okay, whatever, cool. All right, bet. And me and Andre worked. One thing I love about Andre, he's, he's my wrestling coach. Whenever we're, we're about to leave for the arena, like he'll always just like grab me and go over some details, some minor details of what we've worked on. And for this fight, Andre's a fucking, just a G, bro. Like he had Derek Brunson's plan A, B, C, and D locked in. Everything that he was gonna do when this didn't work and then this didn't work, we had it sussed. It was all done. Observe. So I knew this was coming. And this was coming, he's just gonna hold on. He was just doing all that knee stuff because he's just trying to stall. He's trying to stall. Controlling the hands and whatnot. And then look, he's already got the hands on the shorts. He's ready. Look at it. Look at that. My man trying to tear off my pints. You want to tear off my pints? Huh? This guy. I got really mad on this one now. When I get mad, if it's someone like you, I get mad at you that has emotion behind it. You know what I mean? Emotions are from the past. With people that have like emotional attachments to feelings are right there and then. So I, f I didn't have any emotion ties to this guy. I got, I felt mad because I was like, what the fuck is this guy doing? It's the second time. So I really expressed that. And when you can consciously raise your anger without any emotion behind it, you're a dangerous person. It's twice. And look at his face. Oh, what did I do, ref? Look at his face. And I fucking flipped him off. So that's twice. Look at his face, stupid. Just slap him right there. And look at this lying ass. Why the fuck you lying? Why the fuck you lying? Oh, I had to calm down. I had to calm down. I did it. I did it. You fucking lying ass. Twice. Caught you in 4K, bitch. Look at him. What did you do? Come on, man. Fucking cheating ass. Hey, you ain't Eddie Guerrero, motherfucker. So I had my distance on point already. Mm, I'm back to my game. Woo. Just showing them. Letting them know. Ooh, with a little oblique kick. And already, you guys know. I'm the guy when it comes to looks. I know how to get them to do what I want. And this one, he went for a single leg and tried to dump his body completely on me, but I felt the weight shift and I adjusted accordingly. Boom. And here, I fucked up because I went too early. So I went at him too early and got back to my hips. But again, this is the fight. Everyone will say it. he hasn't fought a wrestler like Brunson. He hasn't fought a guy with a knockout, one punch knockout power like Brunson. He's going to do this. He's going to do that. He's going to get ragdolled. He's going to Blah, 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 blah. He's going to get slammed on his head. I heard it all before this fight. <laughs> Look at him. Just diving for the legs. Like a fucking beggar. And I felt fresh, bro. Boom. I felt fresh. Did not feel lethargic at all. Felt sharp. Felt like I was in my zone. Hips. Whoop. Distance on point. Distance on point. Just showing him. I'm not overly chasing anymore. I'm just, ooh. Just touching him. Just touching him, cutting him off nicely. This one, I was able to read that and just block him with the first frame. Nah, we knew that was coming. Not the double up. Look at him, stupid. Whoop. Ah, we knew that was coming. Like I said, Andre had the, the, the game plan. A, B, C, and D. Sussed. His game plan. Figure it out. I think Adam had a lot to do with that as well. Maybe Scooby. Yeah, so shout out to those guys. <laughs> Motherfucker try to brush it off. Look at him. He's like, mm-mm. Oh, really? Boom. I was reading them so easily now. That point right there, I was going to lateral drop or do something crazy. But I thought, nah, just chill. Just chill. Don't get crazy. Just relax. I don't mind grappling, bro. I love grappling. But I'm like, do something with it. He was just trying to stall. He didn't do shit because he knew he was fucked. He had nothing for me on the striking. So what is he doing now? What? Where's the attacks? Boom. Broke it down. And I went around the back, tried to take his back. He adjusted, and I said, all right, cool, bet. Set it up, boom, because he's so fucking predictable. Ooh, let's see that again. He's so fucking predictable. I knew he was coming straight for the shoot. Boom. I stumbled, regained myself, and I saw he was fucked up straight away. And look at the combo I hit him with. Boom. Jeez. Who? Oh, Joko Sibé. And then here, 
I took my time, I paused. So he gets back up and I stood right there and he goes like this. When you're rocked, when you're rocked, no striking coach tells you beckon them on for more. That's the dumbest shit. Come on. I'm fucked up. Come on, let's see. <laughs> Watch. He goes, come. I was like, all right, bet. Watch this. Whip beast. Oh, Joko Sibé. Olo shi. Olo ibruku. I follow up by Yae. Boost. Oh, I see it. Predictable slip. Just touching him. I wasn't even trying to fuck him up. Boom. Oh, bro. Herb Dean saved his ass here, man. Herb Dean saved his ass because I was about to destroy him. And look, I wasn't even like going crazy. I was just whipping it from the hip. Yeah. So I, I wasn't trying to like go crazy. I was just touching it because I knew it was done. Mm -hmm. Look at that from the hip. Sit down. I knew I had it. And that was it. Done. Show don't show. Easy. Hit them with the shaku shaku. Guara guara. And then, ah, uh, arm swing. Bruv. Herb Dean shaved him. And here I'm just saying what's up to my corner. I kind of got a little bit emotional. Just a smidge in this bit. Just a smidge in the feels. My man Andre, because we worked on this shit. Mwah, it's fucking beautiful. And you just know they're predictable. Also, I was stronger than him. Like, yeah, he tried to hold me for a while, but trust me. He, you ask him, I was a lot stronger than them. Everyone looks at me, oh, skinny boy, skinny this. But trust, it ain't about the show. I'm built to go. That whole week was dope. I'll tell you a story. I'll tell you a story about MSG. So, I went to the Knicks game earlier in the week, right? I looked good. I was walking through New York City with my fucking, my jacket on I got from the Bronx. That was like in the uh, previous trip, my first time in New York. I brought it back. I put the Tims on. Put the Tims on because he's in New York, man. Yeah, you heard? <laughs> So I was in MSG, vibing, yeah, floor seats, fucking dope. They even put me on the big screen. And then the game's about to kick off maybe in about three minutes. And I see one of the ball guys kind of like beckon me to take a shot. No, man, I'm good. I can't. <laughs> I'm scared. <laughs> Hell no, I don't want to be that guy. I felt like shame. I felt this, like I didn't want to put myself out there. Like, fuck, everyone's going to be watching me. What if I miss? And then... I had like an internal dialogue for a split second where I was like, so the fuck what if you miss? Motherfucker, you're in Madison Square Garden. You're in Madison Square Garden and you get to take a shot into the hoop before the game starts. Fucking say yes, just go for the shot. So I was like, yup, yup. And then he goes, ah, oh, they're about to do the, what do you call it? Tip off. And I was like, ah, oh, never mind. And that sat with me for the rest of the the game. That sat with me for the rest of the week because I felt like, man, I should have taken that shot. I should have done it. So when I was in Madison Square Garden during fight night, I made sure I went for it. And I did. And I fucking sunk that shit. Sunk that shit easily. Side note, the next time I was back in MSG was maybe a few months later. Um, the next year. The next year. And the same exact ball guy sees me. He's like, hey. I was like, I remember you. I was like, oh. And I was like, bro. And this is earlier before the game, so I tell him about the story. Like, that time, you gave me the ball, I didn't shoot it. I fucking, that eats at me. He's like, do you want to shoot it? I'm like, fuck yeah, let me shoot it. So I grab the ball. <sighs> miss. That's all good. Hit me again. <sighs> miss. And the place is getting full. People are watching me shoot fucking air balls and hitting the rim and hitting the backboard. And I sunk a few eventually, but I didn't care. I was just like, just shoot your shot. Fuck, shoot your shot. Who cares? Like, it is what it is. And yeah, that's just a little side note, a little side story I wanted to share with you guys because I felt like for me, it was a teaching moment. It was a teaching moment to learn. Um, fuck what people think, fuck if they're watching, fuck if you fail, just do it again. This moment, what did I say to him? Let me see, I said something like, all that shit you were talking, I had to make sure you paid for it. I think that's what I said here. But I still gave him respect. And this, this was bars, this was, this right here, none of this, like whenever I'm on the mic, it's just, I just flow. But this is one of my favorite post-fight interviews because I was just, I was like a vessel and I was just like spitting out bars. This was like a walk in the park. This was a walk in the garden. Madison, baby. Yeah. And my boy Andre. They say you don't have no wrestling. They say no jujitsu, but you soon find out. You saw some wrestling tonight, folks. Another block coming up. Keep saying, man. I don't throw in hope. 
Yeah, that's that. Definitely one for the history books. So never be forgotten. And homeboy's fighting. What's his name? Jared, my man. Bronson's fighting Jared next. So, oh, he's blonde Bronson now. Ooh, mythical fighter. I don't know why people have this fucking all these excuses and whatnot. Oh, blonde Bronson's undefeated. Nah, it's based on research. 